Hello and welcome back to Warsword Conquest. We're going to sell a couple of pieces of gear here that we gained from the last dungeon run. Don't worry, I'm not selling the Spear of Twilight because I'm going to be equipping that on one of our companions just now. But we're, I just thought I'd, I'd show you that we're getting 7,100 gold from that because... Usually, when I go into a dungeon, we either get completely stiffed, where we basically don't get anything, or we get something amazing, and that's exactly what we got. We got something pretty cool, and we're going to be giving him the Spear of Twilight. I actually don't really want him to use this in a one-handed fashion, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take away his shield. This is probably a really bad idea, all things considered. I'm going to give him this helmet as well, even though this looks absolutely stupid and doesn't actually fit him properly from a lore perspective. It is going to be much better for him uh, in terms of, you know, protection and so on and so forth. I'm also going to replace his boots because I want him to survive, obviously. I want him to survive. I also want him to do massive damage. So hopefully that's going to help him because here's the thing. He's our medic, right? He's our medic. So him having the ability every time he hits 16% chance, isn't it a 16% chance for the Spear of Twilight to hit some uh, hit something and kill them instantly? I think so. I think it's a 16% chance. And because it's a 16% chance, as long as he's attacking and as long as he's alive, he's always going to have that, that possibility, which is going to make everything so much easier easier for us or at least it should make things a little bit easier for us so anyway we're gonna see if i can um try to maximize my dodge in this particular episode so i'm thinking that what we're gonna try to do uh, well obviously i need to level up right so what are we gonna do to level up well we need to actually get that bandit base quest that would be a significant benefit for us or i could just try to get a bunch of kills unfortunately playing against skaven corsairs is a little bit difficult because obviously I am damaged. I mean, you can quite clearly see that. I don't have a lot of HP left. However, apart from that fact, it is very difficult to actually kill them because they have gunners. And like this guy, he actually almost just killed me. Did you see that? He literally almost just killed me. That would have been very messy. But thankfully he didn't. So I'm actually fine here. And hopefully we're going to just see these guys just run in to our amazing amazing lines of crossbowmen and get absolutely massacred actually whoa there's the chaos dwarf inferno going off okay very nice indeed i like that okay come on out kill this guy if i can dodge oh nice no oh, and then i got yep see now that's exactly what i'm talking about got killed by the uh by the gunner got killed by the gunner there's nothing i can do about that unfortunately i am gonna need to find uh i think it's cyrus right isn't it cyrus that actually provides me with the uh with the ward safe i think it's cyrus i could be wrong about that but it doesn't really matter either way i need to find one of the unique merchants i have enough money to be able to purchase i think at least the uh first level of um of the uh of the ward safe and even though that is i think only a one in six chance or it's like a one in something chance I think that's actually still going to be relatively powerful for us. So I'm kind of hoping that we'll be maybe able to do that. And look, look, there he goes. There he goes. There's the automatic leveling. The automatic leveling is now coming in. And look at what he's done. He's increased his intelligence to nine. He's increased his wound trim at first aid and so on and so forth to three. And that's fantastic. I love that, uh, that new feature. That is an absolutely fantastic feature. Literally one of the best things that they have added. Just purely for me specifically, I, I personally really love that. Because I don't know about you, but I don't really like going in to 10 billion companions. Because let's face it, there are going to be times where you have so many companions that it's going to be extremely difficult to keep on top of those. Especially considering there are so many generic companions as well. I mean, just think about it. There are a lot of generic companions that start at level one in Warsaw Conquest, and it is going to be sufficiently amazing to just have the ability to just go, hey, you know what? Boom, there you go. Instant. Instant, uh, you know, level up. And we don't even need to worry about that. You know, we could just, you could, we could just leave them there. You know, it's absolutely amazing. And as you can see, look at this. Look at this guy. Three engineering, three first aid, three surgery, three wound treatment. And obviously he's going to continue doing that until he gets to, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what level we want him to stop at. I bet we're probably just going to let him just go until he's, um, you know, intelligence 30 or something along those lines. That's probably going to be the, the play here. 
you know, I think that's probably going to be the play at least. We've got some deserters here that we could potentially fight. Mm, yeah, no, I don't really want to fight those. Generally, I want to try to fight people that have around 50 or so troops. They're still having issues actually taking this. I'm quite surprised about that. I thought the auto resolve would give them a pretty big advantage. But I guess the Chaos Dwarves actually just slapped a bunch of really, really high level enemies in there. And that's probably the reason why they're having so many problems. But I could just wait a little bit longer and then I could speak to uh, Mr. Malekith because that's actually what I wanted to do the entire time. So let's go and speak to him. There he is. Hello there, sir. Do you have any tasks for me? There we go. This is exactly how I wanted it to play out. This is perfect. So destroy bandit lair. We know which one it is. It's this one over here. Unfortunately, I am a little bit damaged. So it may be uh, not so good to go in there just yet. How many days do I have to do this? 60 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Should be pretty simple then. Should be pretty simple. I did actually level up as well. So that's the thing. We need to increase our strength to be able to offset our encumbrance as well. So I'm thinking we're just going to... We, we are going to go for more agility here just so that I can get another point in athletics and weapon master once, once, once we get to 30. And then once we've done that, we're going to start just pumping our strength as much as we possibly can. It's going to be extremely useful for us. And apart from that, obviously, if we go in here, I'm going to try to survive. I feel like I haven't really been prioritizing my survival that much, even though I kind of have. I mean, I haven't been staying at the back of the battlefield or anything like that, because let's face it, we want to get in involved, don't we? We want to get involved. We want to do some damage with our crossbow. But unfortunately... The enemy just has so many ways of killing you because they have these guns. And the guns are a big problem. And they will continue to actually be a problem uh, as we progress in the game. Because obviously if we fight Skaven on a bigger scale, of course, we are going to have to fight their gunners. And their gunners are going to be... Oh, they're going to be very hard for us to deal with. So I'm hopeful that we're going to be okay with that. Hopefully we will be. But as you can see, look at this. Look at how much damage I'm doing yes <laughs> oh no the gunners hey, did you see that I was so pleased that I had survived that entire time and then all of a sudden boom out of nowhere ah uh, okay I feel like the Skaven uh, I don't know I feel like they shouldn't have access to guns they are just so so strong with them but Obviously, there you go. That's just how it is. But look, look at nothing. Look at nothing. Have you seen him? He's getting a bunch of kills. He's getting a bunch of kills. How many did he get? He got three kills in this particular fight alone, which is really, really good. Very pleased about that. Very, very pleased. Because that means that, that, you know, the faster that he can level up, the faster that we can become an absolute monster. Because the more surgery skill and wound treatment and so on and so forth we have the faster we're going to be able to recover from these kinds of events and we're then going to be able to enter even more uh you know wonderful situations a halfling literally just stole 2000 gold from me really <laughs> okay well that's pretty uh that's pretty incredible okay i'm just gonna get rid of some of this cheese here and we're just going to just gonna do that. There we go. There's another 1100. That's pretty decent. I was actually thinking of... Wait a minute. No, we've already done something here. Okay, so we don't even need to do that. I'm kind of thinking right now... Oh, there's a farmer. We could potentially do that. Hmm. I think that's probably a pretty good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell my prisoners. It would have given me 1200 if there was a ransom broker here. Obviously, there's just that guy. Uh, Ramun, as far as I'm aware, does still, in this mod, give basic... Uh, you know, basic, um, what is it now? Basic returns on on uh, on slave trading and, and ransom brokering and so on and so forth. So it's actually not that good to uh, to really go for that. And otherwise, let's have a look. Save the village of monoliths from bandits. Okay, we'll go over there and do that immediately. We've got some more Skaven Corsairs. This is actually a really good place to level up. And I wish I'd known that there were so many Skaven Corsairs around this area um, you know, ahead of time, because it is just incredible, the amount of enemies that you can fight. And if you have a small but significantly powerful force, you can actually do some crazy cool things here, because you can actually do what I was doing beforehand, before I uh, rescued a bunch of uh, Chaos Dwarves and, and various other evil-aligned units, 
uh, and just basically fight them with a smaller force and then you're going to get significant renown gains from that which is going to be really really impactful it's going to be super impactful for you because the more renown you can get the more power you can get because then you get more units and obviously in warsword conquest there are so many different kinds of units and especially if you if you think about you know let's let's just say that you think about i don't know uh, some of the bigger units right some of the bigger units like uh, if you're playing skaven the rat ogres or uh you know for me specifically the dark elves the dark ogres And that seems to be it. Okay, very nice. And oh. Oh, really? Are you serious? That's it? That's that's the only loot we're going to get? Okay, that's uh, that's actually quite strange. Anyway, Nathan, as you can see, did actually just advance his intelligence to 10. And once again, we're basically just going to be leaving him to do his own thing. Because there is really no point in me, uh, you know micromanaging him you know because technically if we were to see him level up uh what would we do right we'd level his intelligence to 10 and then we'd get him uh you know some combat skills or something like that but if we want to power level his medic skills then that's probably going to be a, a good idea just to just to focus on those for the most part at least ah hello there there is a chaos dwarf vassal here this could be a potential for some pretty cool oh there's only four of them. Why is there only four of them? <laughs> okay. Never mind. Never mind. I was actually thinking to myself, oh. Nearby allied troops will ignite on release. Bright Supreme Sorcerers. We have one of those? We have one of those? Or is that a... Is that is that an enemy thing? I actually have no idea. Because uh, as far as I remember from Bright Wizards, they're, they're mostly used by the Empire. I don't know. Is that is that just me? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, nearby allied troops ammunition will ignite on release. That seems like an allied thing to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's, uh, that's our thing. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Anyway, there we go. Let's continue onward. Unfortunately, he did manage to escape. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to take him prisoner for reasons. But otherwise... We're just going to try and see if we can find Mr. Witch King Malakith because we obviously want to make sure that we can hand in this quest. And uh, I actually wonder where he is right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna try and find him. Ah, there he is. All right. So I basically just went and asked uh, the um, 
sorceress that we just went into the battle with and she said he was near Hotek's column and then I saw all these huge armies of dark elves coming over here anyway there you go look at this is exactly the reason why I wanted to do this technically this would have been an exceptional thing to do much earlier on in the playthrough but unfortunately at the time I didn't have the ability to do it anyway we gained significant experience cash all that wonderful stuff do we have anything else four dwarf mm, four chaos dwarf prisoners I actually don't think I can do that. Mm, I'll try it. I'll try it, but I highly doubt that I'll be able to do that. Uh, there we go. Corvus has actually just advanced. As you can see, his strength has, has leveled up to 14, power strike to 4. Very nice. And we could take, uh, we could try to fight those Skaven Corsairs. I'm actually kind of weirded out why they're running in there. Why did they run in there instead of running into me? That's really, really strange. They're going to just get absolutely wrecked over there, I guess. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't even need to level this guy up. I, I don't. I don't even need to do that. Technically, it may be a good idea to give him more weapon master so that he can actually level his proficiencies. That might actually be a good way to go about things. But I think I'm just gonna play it like this, and we're just gonna leave leave him to do whatever, and hopefully it will be uh, working out quite nicely. Because I'm actually intrigued to see what actually happens. A dark elf merchant. Hello there, sir. This is a very specific merchant that is going to hopefully allow me to buy something amazing. Okay. Um, assassin armor is looking pretty light. Yeah, we might want to go for that, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have a look. I'm going to have a look. I mean, there's a bunch of armor here that's it's pretty heavy, but obviously not heavy in comparison to some other things. Uh, the dual assassin swords are looking really, really nice right now. As you can see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, are they actually good? I, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, it's for, from a certain from from a certain perspective or certain aesthetic, you know. Because if you want the the classic green swords, then you can obviously do that. Um, I'm wondering whether I should purchase this or not. I do lose armor, and I I only lose two encumbrance, which is really not that big of a deal. So I guess I'll just leave it for the moment. I was, I was kind of hoping he'd have something a bit better. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, no, it's just Marcus. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to buy anything from him because we haven't won 10 tournaments. We're not level 30. Uh, those are the requirements for that. All right, so we are in the arena at the moment. And, uh, yeah, don't worry. I'm probably not going to be doing a tournament. I'm just going to have a look and see where they actually are. Yeah, as you can see, there's one in Goslaw, But, obviously, Goslaw is currently owned by the Chaos Dwarves. Mount Veneer, obviously, is pretty close by-ish. Is in Realm of Chaos territory. But, obviously, we're not really going to be able to go there either. Because we have to go through Chaos Dwarf territory to be able to get there. And, obviously, this is Nippon territory. This is Vampire Count's territory. And that's going to be kind of hard to get to anyway. But the main reason why I was actually coming in here is to learn Ignore Pain. So that's exactly what we're going to do. 12,000 in cash. I already have, by the way, two, uh, actually wait, three Enterprises in each of the towns. As you can see, there's only three towns available to the Dark Elves initially, as far as I can tell. And, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on here? The undead pirates are absolutely murdering. Yeah, they are absolutely murdering. Look at this. They they have almost eliminated the Nippon colonies. There's only uh, there's only one town. There's only one town remaining. Uh, they must have taken Nagasa uh, Nagasaki, right? They, they must have taken that and Fukushima. They must have taken both of those. I actually have no idea. But um, that's kind of... Uh, well, that, that's very impressive. That is very impressive because uh, when we when we saw some of the undead um, undead pirate units, they were okay. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have said that they were super super strong, but I guess anything can happen. You know, anything can happen. So basically, what I've actually been doing is just running around checking the various taverns because I've been wanting to try and see if I can find either Cyrus or just in general find some additional things that are going to be quite important for us like for example finding some mercenary troops that could potentially be useful and also finding these quests so like as you see here a villager from dark glade needs my assistance so let's have a look where is dark glade dark glade is over here that's pretty far away but we should be able to get there in time 
or at least I hope so. The infestation of bandits is over there. And bear in mind, as you can see, we are still gaining a decent amount of cash every single week because of our enterprises. That's the reason why I, I very much recommend, obviously I still recommend this even after all these years, I still recommend going for a heavy focus on economic power at the very beginning of the game. Just ignore everything else. You don't need personal power, even though it is good. Don't get me wrong. It is very good to go for personal power. It's good to go for any anything that's going to provide your character with a slight benefit here and there. However, I'd highly recommend prioritizing cash as much as you can, because even in the base game of Warband, in any mod, well, okay, I'll 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 t I'll, I'll, sh I'll restrict my comments on that because it is not actually any mod that is going to benefit from a huge amount of cash because enterprises in some mods are not that powerful so you just have to kind of play it by what kind of mod you're actually you know using at the time but in Warsaw Conquest and in a number of other mods for Warband enterprises are fantastic they're really really good and they are inevitably going to be giving you so much more value than you put into them because they give you a constant stream of cash every single week and it just offsets your entire your entire weekly cost which is amazing it's so good it's so good to go for that anyway we are going to try a dungeon i think if i can't find any skaven corsairs now i will try a dungeon there are some Chaos Zealots. I, I want to go in for one more round against the Skaven Corsairs. And then we'll go into the dungeon when I've had the opportunity to mute the music. Uh, because the music obviously is copyrighted in the uh, in the dungeons I, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, and it's... Uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a difficult one actually because the uh, the music that plays during the dungeons is not actually removable through, through YouTube itself. Uh, because it's a cover. It's a cover of another piece of music. And it basically makes it impossible to remove it through the use of YouTube's tools. So I have to remove it in before before the actual uh, the video goes out. And that was, uh, you know, obviously a bit of an issue. Unless we want the sound to be completely muted, which is not what we want, obviously. You want to hear the combat sounds and all that stuff. And me exclaiming stupidly about how I've died for the, th the you know umpteenth time to that random headshot. Because that tends to happen to me quite often, doesn't it? Anyway, let's try and see if I can actually do damage to these guys. Oh, nice. Good hit. <laughs> is it? Is it really a good hit? Kind of. I'd like a headshot, please. Can I, play, can I Can I? please get a headshot? Come on now. Yes. Nice. That was actually a captain. As you can see, the captains give insane experience for what they are. Because, obviously, as you may or may not know, Skaven are pretty easy to kill most of the time. They don't have significantly large amounts of HP unless you're looking at a particular, you know, tankier unit. But most of the time, they're pretty simple to kill. Uh, unless they have massive dodge, of course, as well. But now with that, now that we have Ignore Pain, I'm feeling a lot better about doing these, these wonderful dungeon runs. Because whenever I get hit, which is kind of inevitable in some cases, you know, I mean, basically... You're, you're, you're probably going to get hit almost every single time you go into a dungeon. It's kind of one of those things that you just kind of have to accept. But it depends. It depends on the layout. Maybe, maybe the dungeon doesn't have a layout that is really difficult. And in which case, you're probably going to be able to, uh, you know, you're, you'll probably be fine. But it depends, as I say. Depends on what kinds of enemies you're fighting. Depends on, you know, a number of other factors as well. But I'm actually kind of surprised what's actually going on here with these uh, with these Skaven right here. These Master Gunners were literally just standing at the very back of the battlefield, not really doing much. I'm staying, by the way, I'm staying this far, far away from them on purpose. Because I didn't want to run in there and just literally get, them, get myself killed by some stray bullet. Because that can happen really, really easily. <laughs> and I'd like to try and prevent that from happening any further than it already has in the past. So let's actually see what we can do here. Because I wouldn't mind... Getting some of these guys, I think they're kind of cool. So I wouldn't mind actually getting rid of some of my other kinds of units here. So I'm thinking maybe the Obsidian Guard, we can get rid of that maybe. Uh, this guy can go, how many do I actually want? I only want two, so, oh no, oh yeah, there's not much space. Okay, I'll get rid of a Witch Elf then, I guess. Okay, that's, that's going to have to be it. Even though the Obsidian Guard is actually a pretty good unit in general. 
I'm just going to be swapping it out for another unit that is just a Dark Elf. It makes it a little bit easier for us to maybe have a bit more of a decent composition because obviously if you think about it, Chaos Dwarves are probably not going to have a huge amount of dodge. And so having some dodge units on the front line is definitely going to make a bit of a difference in our own survivability. Uh, it, well, should we say army survivability rather than, um, you know, personal survivability because that's obviously not going to be the case. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go into the dungeon. I just have to turn off the music first. All right, so we just have to choose our second individual. I don't really want to take any of the Chaos Dwarves because they have guns and they're probably going to cause us to, uh, well, possibly have some issues. Should we take one of the Black Guards? I think that sounds like a pretty fun idea. And uh, yes, difficulty one, obviously, as you might expect. So let's go in and see what happens. These guys are obviously going to be Skaven. Uh -huh. Isn't that hilarious? Or maybe not so hilarious, because apparently that was... A, 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 yeah, yes, that was a gun. That was a gun that literally shot me from behind. No offense, but Sk aren't Skaven the most honorable individuals in the entirety of Warhammer Fantasy? I mean, I've never heard of them backstabbing anyone. Ah, oh, never mind. All right, well... If you couldn't tell that was sarcasm, then I, I'm sorry, but uh, I couldn't make it any obvious, uh, any more obvious. Anyway, so I thank you very much for watching. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I was just going to do the dungeon run and then end the episode, but there's the dungeon run. We did it. Yeah, well, we, we actually did a... a yeah, uh, uh, never mind. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.